Hey, third grade. Nice seeing you guys again. Uh, Mr. Calvert here for your next art project. This will be kind of a quicker project than what we've been doing lately. Um, some of you guys might finish it today. Some of you guys might finish it up next time. Um, not a super long project for us. And today I want to introduce you to an artist named Jim Darling. And we're also going to talk a little bit about space. Okay, but we'll get to the space thing at the end. Um, so Jim Darling, he is a contemporary artist. Remember, a contemporary artist is an artist who is living. Now, I could not find his age anywhere on the internet, but he appears to be a pretty young guy, uh, maybe about your parents' age. Uh, so pretty young artist. And he is originally from Dallas, Texas, which is right here on the map. Here's Dallas. You can see my mouse. Now he lives in Los Angeles, though. And here's LA where that red dot is. Now we would be right about here on the map of Wisconsin, just south of Madison. Okay. Um, and Jim Darling, he is a painter. Okay, I don't think I have to explain painting to you. Now, when we look at his paintings, he is most famous for the series of window paintings. Now, these aren't just any windows, they are actually windows from a plane. And he was very interested in how um, people's views change when they're looking out of window of a plane. So when we look at his artworks, you're always going to see kind of this frame around it. And that's, uh, if you've ever been on a plane, this is what a plane window looks like. It has kind of this frame part. And then the inside of that oval, it kind of um, pushes out a little bit, almost um, like there's a little bit of depth to it. You can also grab this part up in the top, and this actually slides down. So you can actually shut your window, too, in a plane. Um, so that way, if you're trying to sleep, you don't have that light coming in. Um, but we'll be sure to draw kind of that window frame in our artwork today, too, as well as we'll start on a landscape. Now, um, in his paintings, we'll oftentimes see that he includes clouds. He might do a picture of a city. He might do a picture of a field or of an ocean. Um, pretty much anything that he's seen looking out his window. So this one, we actually see an example of a city. You can see that there's a big baseball stadium right here. There's some skyscrapers. There's a big bridge over here. And one thing I really appreciate about um, Jim Darling's work is his use of space. Now, you might be thinking, space? There's not any space in this, Mr. Calvert. I don't see the sun and the stars and the planets. Um, space in art is when something is close to us or far away. Okay, um, So there are actually lots of different ways to create the look of space. Here are just a few of them. Um, for example, if you overlap something, that tells somebody that one thing is, is in front of another. Okay, So this circle is in front of this one. It's overlapping. So that tells me that this circle is the closest of those three circles. Um, another important way to show space is called placement. Okay, I, a lot of you guys will probably use placement on this project. Now when something is lower on the paper, so here's the square, if it's lower, like this one and this one, that tells me that it's closer to me. When things get further away, they actually get higher and higher and higher up our paper. Um, another thing is size. Okay, things that are close to us look bigger. As things get further away, they get smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay, so this little guy back here is the smallest. Um, a lot of times when things get further away, the value changes. So it goes from being really bright to being really faded or light. Okay, so this one goes from kind of this dark circle and it gets lighter and lighter and lighter until it almost disappears. Okay, you've probably actually seen that before if you ever... Um, look out across a long field. A lot of times the fields that are really, really, really far away, they almost get really like a lightish, bluish green color. And last but not least, there's something called linear perspective, which is a little bit trickier. Um, but I do have one example I'm going to show you of that um, that I made. But notice how it follows like this diagonal line to this point out here. That's another way to make something look further away. So these are just a few examples for you to use. I do expect you to use at least one of them to help show space in your artwork. Right, so we'll take just a quick look at a few of his. A lot of them are kind of similar. Um, here we see one, there's kind of this mountain down here. We see some clouds. Okay, notice how the mountain's color changes. It goes from kind of this darkish bluish green and gets kind of lighter and lighter and lighter until you have kind of this really light um, blue almost. Um, if you want to include a plane wing, you're welcome to. Okay, some of his have that, probably depends on where he was sitting at in the plane. Um, other times he doesn't have those. And one thing I really like about his paintings is that they're um, very painterly, which means that they're not super realistic. They're kind of just like smudges of paint. 
Um, that's kind of his style is it's kind of painterly is what we would say. It's not like, it doesn't look like a photograph. Um, here we see a mountain again. Notice how those colors change. You have kind of this white mountain and then it changes to this dark mountain. Um, here we see a field. Um, if you ever look down, like on Wisconsin, if you're over a plane, a lot of times it has like these geometric shapes from the different fields and crops. Here's just a handful of them. Okay, we saw a couple of them. Here's another city down here. That might have been what we saw. And here's another city. So notice too how um, a lot of times things that get further away get higher. So there's this building right here. It's lower on the painting than these ones back here, but the ground is flat. Okay, that's not because it's on it's not because it's on like a hill or anything like that. It's just that as things get further away, they get higher and higher up our paper. All right, so we are going to take a look at some of Mr. Calvert's drawings that I made for this project. And then I'm going to kind of show you guys how to draw out the window. And then you'll be um, able to decide what kind of landscape you want to draw outside of your window. Okay. Mm -hmm. 